<laughs> All right. Um, we just got back from the Apple Store. This guy's excited. You excited? Yeah, we've been waiting for this since June. Uh, actually, longer in some ways because um, there's been a long time since uh, the you know Apple introduced that they were going to do the, this. Uh, we didn't know it was going to be AR, or VR, whatever they call it. Yeah. But instead, what they did was they invented a new space, which they call it spatial computing. He's laughing, but it, it's um, this 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 one's going to be a little long. So earlier, you probably saw the clip that I was actually at the Apple store and and you saw the fumbling as in the first unit having some difficulties and, and so forth. And, my, and you, you, as you know, I'm very animated. You can see my facial expressions of of how things how things I took it. We're going to go through the full full just of it. Um, let's start off by, by talking about the appointments. Pretty cool. They were pretty much on time. Um, Justin here woke up first thing in the morning. What time did you wake up? I woke up at 4.55 a.m. 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 PST to try and get us a reservation. And we, he did. He was successful in getting us a reservation. Um, but it wasn't until for for him was the following Monday, this coming Monday. Yes. So We're in the weekend right now. Yeah. So what we thought was going to happen was we thought at 5 a.m. when reservations open, you would have to sign up for the earliest appointment possible, day of. That's not what happened. What happened was that these reservations were for the following week. What's going on this weekend are just open reservations. These days, you can walk into the store, schedule an appointment, and do your demo then. And, and that's kind of what we did. We, 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 we did schedule it. He scheduled it for Monday, and my schedule was until the following Wednesday. Same week, so his would have been on Monday and you know, and then a Wednesday for myself. Now, so so that part was really good. And you know, we were able to get out a little bit sooner. Uh, we went there this afternoon and having lunch and then afterwards, um, we're like, oh, why don't we swing by and just see if we can get an appointment? And yep. we did. Yep. It was for later on this afternoon. Now, we're in the Southern California area and there wasn't much of a line. So, and I kept getting these reminders saying, oh, you know, your, your appointment's X, Y, Z time, X, Y, Z time. Now, so I just, we just walked up. I go, hey, let's do a crash course, right? Meaning, let's go there early and see if we can get in. And we did. Literally, like within, I would say 90 minutes, hour and a half of when we first arrived at the location, we got an appointment. Yeah, super nice people as usual. Um, very knowledgeable individuals. Had a great chat and yada yada yada, and recap kind of my our journey together as the type of VR headsets we have had. Um, and, and we'll go through that as we're having this discussion. So the experience itself was really cool. What was also cool was the fact that if you look on his face, he has glasses. What I mean by that is that. They had ready lenses insert for the device, not for you for not for purchase, but ready for you to demo, which was really cool. Yeah, what they you don't need your prescription beforehand either. What they did was they took my glasses and put them into a little machine to gauge what the prescription was. Yeah, so so very modern, right? It's not like they ask you for a doctor's prescription or anything like that. And and what they did was they just had a scanner scan the the lens prescription and then had a drawer of lenses ready to go which is really cool because the device overall the vision pro really do not recommend uh, people using it with gla actual glasses you can wear contacts like i did um i do but not for um not for just trying it out okay so experiences overall getting the appointment everything was great so good job apple um going on to that the costs, we'll talk about that later because it is a heavy price. You got to go first. You got to go about 10 minutes before I did. Yeah, we pretty much did it at the same time. So let it out because this guy's been holding it back from the drive back. He couldn't hold it. So what are your thoughts? What are your initial thoughts? Okay, the headset is extremely cool. Yes, it's expensive. But at the same time, this is 10 years of technology accumulating into one device. 
We were talking about this at lunch, but realistically, almost every single Apple product released within the last 10 or so years incorporates a piece of that technology in this headset. So, a couple of examples we threw out. Please. Apple Silicon in the Mac. Those chips were made specifically for this device. It would not be possible to fit an entire computer, like an entire desktop computer, into a machine that small. So what they did was integrate everything first into the phones, a single chip into just this incredible architecture that's super efficient. Eventually, they scaled that up to higher power and higher performance in the Macs. And now we have that in Vision Pro. Uh, furthermore, they also, Face ID, iPhone 10, it looks ridiculous, I know. But that technology is seen in Vision Pro because the thing has eye tracking. So, okay. I, this, this was like right before we went in, we had this discussion. Apple did incorporate a lot of their technologies throughout their devices into the Vision Pro. Um, like what Justin just said, you know, the, the, the cameras, the, the recognitions, all that. But ultimately, it was that, for me, it was about that M1 chip. And, and like I said to him, uh, don't, don't, our, don't our sit down. If it wasn't for the fact that the logic board was literally a size of a maybe two of the maybe a one and a half credit cards add to put together and the thinness and the compactness where they could fit it into the vision pro and that's what it is it is a spatial computer that's what they have created so okay the feel i i agree with justin 110 percent. it's an apple product it's not going to feel crappy uh, all the materials like all the vloggers said it, it, feel, it feels great all the reviewers says it feels great um no different than others i, I felt like the dent the, i mean you saw it on, on my review at least with with me um it is dense the, yeah. the unit's dense it's not big it's dense yeah it's a lot of people said it was super heavy i didn't think it was that heavy i can see how after a long period of time it will wear on you but when i put it on i I didn't have too many problems with it. I noticed, I, I did notice the weight. Um, but what I would say is, the word I would use is, it is dense. Um, I think your first observation, wow, when we first walked in the store, I, I think you saw in the beginning of our clip, he, Justin said it, it's, it, wow, it's not as big as he, he thought it was gonna be. Yeah, all the all of the marketing and everything, it makes it look really big. It's actually not. Yeah, it, it's actually, it's actually, you know what, the com very comparable to like a scuba uh, uh, diver type of, of, of um, medium-sized oh, yeah. goggles. Yeah. Very much like that. So the size of it is not the issue, but the density of the unit, it is dense. Um, needless to say, the materials that Apple have chosen is very premium. Aluminum, glass, and so forth. No doubts about that. Now, okay, we got, let, let's, let's fast forward. Uh, do you have anything to add before I fast forward? Um, aside from the fact that, I mean, you've seen the thing. It looks like every other Apple product. Yeah, it's very it's, premium. Yeah. I mean, we saw tons of boxes, right? I mean, you saw the unboxing. We got the touch and everything else. Very premium. Let's fast forward. You got, okay, you got your, you know, they, they, they measure your, your prescription. Very cool again, Apple. Great job. Um, put the lenses on, went through the whole period. Um, let's talk about the unit itself your first impression when you put it on, when you first saw that home screen? I thought, I thought the pass-through was going to be better than it was. What you saw was the equivalent of looking through your iPhone's camera, right? But with that said, I still thought it looked better than the Quest 3. No, uh, no doubt. Um, I, I, I... I would say I had the same observations. Um, it was good. It was very good. Um, but it, had, it didn't have screen door effect. It, it, that, that it did not, unless you really, 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 really look for it. Um, okay. So my impression, it, it just had, it, it was clear. It, it was very clear. Um, when I first put it on, when that first menu first came up, what I would say is that if the image felt like about eight to 12 feet away, it was almost touchable. And, and because we were in a very, very well-lit area, 
everything was crystal clear and it wasn't like super bright because the background was really bright. Yeah. But but what I would say is that it was very hologram feel like. I would agree. That 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 to me, so that's the initial um thing. Now, before we we we, we step we skipped two steps before we got to the home screen. Because first of all, the first exercise I had us do was eye tracking. Yeah. Three times around the world of like nine dots, I think, right? Basically like Yeah. Pretty cool. Um and it worked really well. It was very precise. I would say it was very comparable to the 15 minutes we had with PSVR 2. Okay. I That's how not memorable PSVR was for me. I, I didn't even remember going through that, to be honest with you. Um, you go three cycles around looking at the dots and, and the gestures are as and to, to, to just pinch it and yep. to recognize it as an enter. Uh, also, um, while we're on that note, you would you would either you can use either hand as long as you put your two fingers or put your hands together it would it would enter as long as you even look at it does not it's not like you have the guy a dot somewhere you just look at the icon or the area and put your two fingers together and it would it would recognize it um one of the things that throughout all multiple um reviewers vloggers said was that your hand has to be in the in the um in the uh, uh, uh the frame of of the, of the uh, your view of your vision I didn't find that to be true because when my hands was dropped low, I was still able to look at an icon and snap my finger out of view and it still work. Did you? Did that occur for you? I think you misinterpreted what they were saying. Okay. Because you did not need it, it to be within the field of view. You yeah. Could have your hands like resting yeah. down here and so it let's would still just, detect it. Yeah. So, so let's say the frames here. I would have thought that you have to go like this, but no, that's not the case. You actually just the. the the retina tra tracking, like everyone says, is extremely impressive. Yeah. That's one. Two, uh, even before that, there's two hands um, on, on the screen. Uh, all you do is put your hands out. Oh, yeah, and then it, it, it just scans like it. the outline yeah. of your hands. So, so those are the two basic steps I have to set up before you get into the immersive experience. And they're right. Everyone's correct. It's very immersive. It, it, it is very good. Um, but the images that, that popped up, it was very... Um, is very hologram but layer like and i'll go on with that so i was able to try out the photo app a video um and then ultimately um the what they call um dinosaur excursion i think those oh, oh we got to look at um a, a website slash yeah it's just a page it was very simple and then we got got to move around different i got to move around different gesture what was your experience like Pretty much the same thing, just without the dinosaurs sure. at the end. So let's go through the first one, the photo app. The photo app consists of a the traditional photo, an immersive photo. The panorama. The panorama. And then the video in the... Spatial video. Spatial videos. Uh, yeah, I might have gotten some of those out of order. So the photos. Let's start with photos first. Plain photo is just... It's Apple HDR. You can... It's basically what you expect. When you open the photo, the world around you will dim so the photo can brighten. So, and then, and then of course, to zoom in, you bring it in. To zoom out, you bring it out. To move something, you basically grab it, pinch it, and then move it to your left or to your right to, to make the image move, right? The gestures are very intuitive. It, it, it really is. It's no different than touching a iPad. Um, then comes the, let's talk about the next fo photo, which is the immersive. The panorama. Okay. Don't, don't get this mixed up because you can, any panorama you have taken in your gallery, you can expand and it'll, it'll expand to 180 degree field 180, of view around right. you. Now, 180 degree wide, but not vertical. So right. you don't get the full dome effect right. per it's, se. It's still a panorama. But it's very good, especially if you do it right on your, uh, do it correctly on, with your um, iPhone or the, whatever camera source that you're using to capture an image. Very good. Uh, that's the panorama. Yeah. Then there's immersive and then there's spatial. Immersive is the one that more of, I think if I'm correct, that's the one that Apple or, or professional generate, which has the entire 180 degree dome. Right, yeah. Where you actually, 
being placed in the environment where you can go up, down, left, right, behind, and even partially down. Yeah. That's the, the, the full immersion, which I'd call it immerse. Yeah, it's similar to like a 360 degree photo, but without 360 degrees. It's just like in front of you into your sides. Now, but, but now comes where the one that was, for me, was pretty impressive. The spatial photo. The spatial photo is very 3D-like. You can almost reach out and touch it. And this is where the hologram, again, word will come back into play. The, that, that, that spatial photo, it's very good. It's not, it's not like flat Stanley type. Yeah. So this headset, a lot of, a lot of reviewers aren't conveying this well. It has a three dimensional display. It's not your phone screen. It's three dimensional. Yeah, I, 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 I wanted to be very caution, cautious in using that term because none of the other um, vloggers or reviewers use the word term 3D. But in a everyday, everyday Joe, Justin and myself, just a normal consumer, the best way we're gonna be able to define it to you, it looks 3D. Yeah. And it looks 3D to the fact that I didn't feel a paper mache feel. It had depth. Right. And that's the next word I wanted to introduce to, to everyone. In this review is that the images had has depth. The videos will have depth. Um, before we go into video, I think that covers the photo part. I believe so. I think okay. that was all the photo. And I we're not we're not gonna break down the specs of of, of the um of the unit because I, I think 4K, 6K, whatever it is, it, it's just very, it's very high fidelity, it's very good. Um, you I know. think it was the clearest headset either of us have looked at. No doubts, no doubts. There you go. It, it is, it is, go. is super, super clear. Now, moving on to the video. Let's talk about um, traditional video first. Just normal, I would say. Yeah, it's same thing as a photo, just the room dim so the video can brighten and you're just watching the video there now but what was super impressive for me i think out of the whole experience this was the most impressive part for me it was the spatial video the spatial video while it's not 180 degrees wide it's not immersive like in 360 the fact that the video really really puts you back into that moment. I think that's the part that was extremely impressive for me. Someone described it, or I think it was during the Apple keynote, they described the spatial um, video to be back in the moment. And, and, and I, I would say this to you right now, if you enjoy videos and you enjoy um, capturing videos and, and know how to process them and, and really want to memorialize that moment, I have to say that's one of the most uh, impressive thing I've seen so far. So, I don't think you explained it too well. Okay. Facial videos, when you look at them, it's exactly like the video, but it has depth. It keeps it keeps the extra depth information. So that's it, fair. It it's hard to convey with words, but it feels like a three D video. Yeah, it, 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 it absolutely does feel like a 3D video, but again, it's not like 3D like when you're in a movie theater. Right. I, I think, again, the depth, like that word we introduced about a couple minutes ago, the depth of the video and the photos, it, it's second to none. I, I, have, I, have, I have to admit, I haven't experienced anything like that on either on a screen, traditional screen, or any type of screen. Right, it felt very natural, where as like movie theater 3D, it's it feels somewhat forced. It feels paper machete-ish. It feels like one layer after yeah. layer. And, and that's the thing about this. You could, re with, with these um, spatial videos and spatial photos, I think the layer has it's faded. It's not completely gone but it's faded, it's a lot less noticeable. Right. So therefore the depth is much more detailed and much more immersive. Yeah. So that, that's what it'll give you. Um, then comes where I got to experience the dino encounter, whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a CGI 
Uh, you put your finger out and the butterfly would, would land on your finger. Very cool. I didn't go squashing it. I wanted to. Uh, if we, you know, um, but then comes where a, a baby dinosaur comes out and then the large two wrap, two big, I think they are raptors, whatever they are, two, two, two big dinosaurs came out and um, it was cool. It was neat. It was very CGI, it was very detailed, so you expect that from modern day CGI. And again, that particular CGI had great depth. I didn't I didn't get to interact with it too much except with the butterfly. But you know, I could I didn't try to zoom none of that. So so those were the type of applications that um I kind of got to use. Did you get to use, I mean, because it's not like we have free time to roam around doing that experience. Right, it's a guided tour, tour of the thing. The Apple employee will walk you through everything that they want you to do. You don't get to explore the headset by yourself. And of course, for me, I have a lot of my, my tour guide has some challenges after that. But I so I started moving into like a message app just to see what it was good like. Um, just really quick, just, and it is very, you know, one thing I didn't mention. You're right. I, I didn't consider that there isn't, when you open the apps, it kind it just popped. Yeah. Every, everything was, everything was very responsive. Um, low and i think that that's credited to to the the hardware that they're using it, it, i mean again we're not going to go through full details or specs but it is an m2 processor in there so yeah. it's not pokey yeah you know it's it's a powerful cpu and I, I don't know exactly how much ram i think it's at least eight gigs of ram in there I hope they put more than eight gigs in it. You think they got eight more? I hope they put more than eight gigs in a computer. I have no, so again, this is a spatial computer. Um, so I got to play with a couple things and um, not to draw this, you know, this review out really deep. Um, anything before to add before I, I go on to kind of start going towards the, the our final kind of, our final views. Other reviewers have been pointing things out like this, but there's just that extra classic Apple Touch where they just put a little bit more attention to detail. So the windows, when you move them, it'll cast a shadow on the environment around you. When you move those windows, it there's something about it. It just it doesn't exactly feel like when you do it in the Meta Quest because it. I don't know how to explain it exactly. Uh, this, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the Meta Quest 3 um, because we're not even going to talk about the two. You, you got to go with the three. Um, comparing to, first of all, comparing to image quality, there is no comparison. Um, it, 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 it is better, period. I mean, all said and done, it's, it's better. Um, now, is it, is it five times the cost better? That could be debatable. But um, but it, it, it's it's very good. Um, the you know the the unit itself it, it's very it's very classy, but it comes at a cost. Um, just as we were going over, if we were to purchase this unit, so the, there's the unit itself, and then there's a a rim that gives the contours around your face. That's where the when you do the scanning, your face is supposed to fit you. I came up with a 21W um, type of goggle fit, but he, being a being a little bit more petite than I am, he came up with a 33W. I don't know how that's measured. Some said that it's measured through the depth of from the, the the unit to your face rather than the width of your face, whatever it was. So, if we were to purchase a unit, we would have to buy two of those because don't two fit, but. I also had him try the 21, which is the one that fit me, and he felt like he was okay. But that piece was $150. No, no, it was 200 bucks. 200 bucks for the light seal is what they call it. Yeah, $200 just for the light seal. Now, um, that doesn't mean the rim around it too. Maybe they include it, maybe they don't. I'm not for sure. But then comes where the band. 
that the what they call it, the the back not the, the the one that goes over top yeah but the rear one the strap yeah I I think it's like the solo loop or something yeah so they come in different sizes I would I would have to use a medium and chances are he has to use a small so that's that's another that's one hundred fifty dollars there or one hundred dollars that one was a hundred oh that was a hundred dollars yeah it was a hundred so, bucks so so that's you now we might be able to cut some corners around there but still that's additional cost. Then comes where the glasses. I think this is reasonable for the lenses, since he does wear actual glasses, the lenses would have to be ordered through them and it's 150 bucks. That includes the prescription. So it's not outrageous. Yeah, I think for those lenses, it's reasonable. Yeah, I think it's reasonable too. So I guess, you know, compared to Quest 3, there's no doubts it's better. But I would say this much too. In a work environment right now, the Quest 3 can do a triple screen. It can do three huge screens. And there'll be AR screens, augmented screens, meaning that once I place them somewhere, just like the Vision Pro, I can walk away and it will be stationary and come back. Right now, um, out of the gate, that feature is not there. Additionally, you only can use one computer screen at a time, but applications you can also so have as others. Right. The difference between what Vision Pro is doing and what the MetaQuest 3 is doing are it's it's a it's little different. bit different. It's different. Because the on the Quest 3, when you run multiple screens, you can't run any other apps. You are just running an application to run more screens for your computer. Yes. Whereas on the Vision Pro, you get to run one Mac screen, but then you get to run other apps, which are then running off of the headset, not your computer. Yeah. So, so Justin, it's absolutely accurate. So from that perspective, it's, 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 a, different, it's a different approach. Yes. It's a different approach to, again, Apple's doing spatial computing. This is not a VR headset like the Quest 3 is. Right. Just by comparing the number of screens that the headset can run, it might seem like you have less windows, yeah. but you don't, don't. really. It, it, because it's it's actually independent. I'm not dependent on something else to run. Exactly. Because it, don't forget, when I'm using a computer to run the triple screen, I'm actually still using a computer to drive it. But in reality, with the Vision Pro device, it's mirroring a screen, but I'm actually the other app. It's an application on a computer. Yes. So it's a completely different approach. Um, I would say out of the gate right now, the Quest 3 has a little bit more offer in application. But again, no different than the Android world. What are the value proposition on those apps? Are they really good apps or are they just trashy apps? Yeah. The Apple Equalverse um, it, it, they always have decent apps and some very good apps. Yeah. They're very applicable apps, very usable apps. So I think that you know that that is going to be rem to be remain to be seen. Um, I think the question comes where is the cheapest you can buy this unit is three thousand seven hundred seventy dollars in some odd sense in California. That's all in including tax. That that's not including the extra lenses. I'm just talking about the bare minimum unit itself. Um, would you buy it? I would not buy it because I am not primarily a Mac user. This headset is primarily uh, productivity based. That was made clear. It's for productivity and media. Media is very impressive on this device as we have seen. Productivity all revolves around a Mac. And I don't primarily use a Mac as my work machine. So I I too struggle with with um putting that type of money towards the unit. Because um a lot of electronics traditionally in the, in this day and age, in the very beginning, it starts out as a toy and then it evolves into a, a, a product productivity tool, right? And this particular unit, the way it's being pitched right now, is very much um, a productivity tool and not a toy. Due to not just because of the price tag, it's due to the applications that's being offered on the unit. Um, 
I, I swear, you saw my, you saw the beginning of the clip before this, just sit down. I pulled out my credit card and I'm, I was ready to kind of almost do it. Um, but, you know, as I sit back, and I think a lot of the vloggers, especially Marquez, I'm going to reference him. Where does Apple go from here? What do they do? What What is it going to, it's going to be dependent, dependent upon a lot of the developers, right? Yeah, that's what a lot of people are saying. This headset is leaning very heavily on the developers to figure out what they're going to do with it. And that's and for me, that's a struggle because the bigger entertainment um, vendors, they're not for it. They're, they're, they're not developing for it. They said, just go on the website and use it that way. Not yet. They don't have apps yet. yet. Yeah, of course, it's Apple. It's yet. But when that, when that time, no different, I guess, when they first started with Apple Music, right? Apple Music over a decade ago, when Steve Jobs said, oh, sell a song for 99 cents. And people were like, no, I'm not going to do that. It's, it's half of the cost of what I can buy at a, sell at a record store, blah, blah, blah. This is way before his time. Yeah, this is uh, way before. But me. at the end of the day, they had to, they had to get on board. And I, I see that it's no different. The other part for me that um, I don't feel like I can purchase this unit, it, it, it does. As I can sit back and go through this vlog and explain to you guys, it's very beta-like for me. Uh, it's very polished. It's a very polished beta. Don't get me wrong. The interface is nice. The the usage, the experience is nice. But there's no, there's not really a, a, a host of applications. There's not a host of true product productivity tools that you can use on the unit. The interaction uh, with it is very Apple Universe. So to Justin's point, you need a Mac. And, and you can't even use it as a, a additional screen like a, like the Quest can for a gaming console or something in that manner. So it's very confined. And, and for that price tag that they're asking for, it's, it's very premium. I get Apple's use, you know, use a very premium uh, product, create a very premium product. But that price tag, it, it's, just, it's just very heavy. And um, so for me, it's very beta. For That's why I step away. And, and trust me when I say this, is that... Um, I could see it on his face after after the store, like, because I was I was running ten minutes behind Justin with my experience, because my experience got delayed due to you saw the, some of the um, troubles I had with the first unit that he brought out. Um, I throttled back because I, I was really I was, I was I was seriously concerned dumping in the thirty eight four thousand thirty thirty eight hundred dollars four thousand dollars to get this unit, but I came back. Oh, what am I going to use it for other than to watch video? Yes, it's better, but it's it, it, it honestly, it just was not three or even five times better than the Quest. It's three. It's not. It doesn't do exactly what we were expecting it to do. What it can do is it does run a whole bunch of iPad OS apps. But how is that any different from just running those apps on your iPad? Yeah. You're or you're just running a floating window instead. Yeah, I mean it's not integrated into like yeah your virtual spaces. So so I'm the biggest hypocrite on the planet. I'm gonna tell you I'm not buying it, and then next thing you know, hey, after this video is done, let's go down and buy it. Right? Um, there are plenty of it for sale right now, as of right now. Um, it, there are plenty of units, yeah. and, and what happened was that um, I, th I think they are anticipating a huge amount of individuals buying this unit. But the struggle comes where that price tag is heavy. At the end of the day, I mean, it's going to be a four thousand dollar, you know, um, proposition. It, it's got to it's got to be worthwhile. And right now, in this twenty twenty four era, uh, with down economy, slow thing, it, it, it's hard to justify spending four thousand dollars on something that's just not quite there yeah. you know the experience is cool it's, it's second to none uh if, if, if you tell me we went to a science center and you try this you have to line i, I would do it it's it's very cool in fact i think he's still going to go back to his monday appointment um but for me i as a as a consumer uh, uh, again as a pro consumer i struggle with getting it now all it takes is probably two or three great apps and i i, I could hop on it because the image quality is very good. There, there, there's no doubts about that. Um, you know, we're not. I, I'm not going to go into full details about like the volume and whatever else. I think it's fine. Everything around it's fine. You know, 
I wish I was I wish I was able to go into settings. That's one of the things that I wanted to go into. Go into settings and really play with like, can I make it brighter or dimmer? What does that look like? I wish I could have done that those things, but they were, we were very confined yeah. in our experience. Um, you you start your clothes off. I don't. He, he already said most of what I wanted to say. It's just some of the smaller things, like the hand tracking, all of it's very refined. It's it's an Apple product. I yeah. don't really know how else to put it. They they put the time and the resources into it, and it's it functions very well. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't want to keep ha like going on and on like I'm I'm, I'm promoting it. Um, what I would say is that. I will, I will even go on, on the ledge to say this, and, I, and, I, and we do we make a lot of purchases, and some of them seem very frivolous. Um, even if you have four thousand dollars laying around and nothing doing with it, I'm not confident I can recommend you go and purchase this unit, other than the fact that you want to be a first adapter. Yeah, I don't think there is any consumer um, who actually should buy this. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a true compelling offering. Um, you're gonna see. I mean, you probably saw in the beginning of the video. You know, the gentleman was very excited walking out the door, and you joke about it. That's a 14-day return policy. I think that 30-minute sessions is really to ensure the experience. Like, do you really want it? I, yeah. I think that's why they spent the time. And, and why I went in it head first, like, okay, when I first went in, I was like 40% wanting to get it. When I got to touch it, and when I first got to put on that first unit, I was 60, 65, 70% got the wanting it but 20 minutes into the experience itself the question kept coming back what do i do with it and it's four thousand dollars could i edit videos on it not really can i edit photos or any no do i have a lot of game no um do i even use uh can i use office suite because i'm an office suite user like excel and what no would you use, no, no, none of those exist. Okay, for four thousand dollars, what are you gonna do? Go check your iMessenger. Um, now you, you say that you, you you said that um the you, you felt like um the the movie entertainment aspect was was a very premium. It is, but I'm gonna tell you because I spent some time with it. The Quest Three, watching a VR concert. Yes, Blackpink. <laughs> that experience, um, even the Post Malone video, uh, uh, Post Malone uh, VR experience, all that. It was, it, you know, again, it's VR, right? It's Hearn's virtual reality. It, it was very good. So, so Apple coming out of the gate doesn't offer that. I'm sure they're going to get there. I'm sure they're going to get to that space, but it's not quite there. And that cost, that I, I can't. I, I'm a very practical person from a money perspective bang for the buck it's not quite there that that just that, that's my struggle so therefore even if you have four thousand dollars laying around I, I can't i personally cannot recommend a, a traditional consumer like you to go pick it up now if you're a developer in, in the it world um if you're an entrepreneur trying to develop some type of new idea i think that i think that could be a compelling reason of why you might want this unit but for a, a, a everyday Unit, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, just keep in mind we do say all of this, uh, not really knowing what apps are actually supported on the thing. Agree, agree. We do know that Netflix and YouTube are not there, which that's already a, that's already a really big hit. Yeah, that that's huge. I mean, because um, you know, even even yesterday, um, when Justin was setting up our 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 our, our very very down to earth racing rig, um, the VR. Um, using Steam. Steam having that VR um, world, and we, and we of course, uh, Asserta, right? I think something like that. That's that game, uh, that racing game, which is as close as you can get to Gran Turismo. No, the, the Grant, it was not anywhere close to what Gran, Gran Turismo um, experience was like, not with the ray tracing and all that good stuff, or the uh, polish, the, the platform, but it was very reasonable. Yep. Um, so that 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 support of developers or an application really needs to be there. And um, yeah, I, I'm look, I'm extremely enticed and and, and 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 looking forward to 
what comes with the Apple Apple, Apple Vision Pro, um, the evolution of it, even if it's just the same unit, they don't even need to update hardware because I think they got ways to go with this hardware. But what comes, what developer, what apps, what what's the usage? I think as that becomes more clear, then I might be willing to, you know, invest in, in a unit like that. And of course, over time, Apple will reduce price here and there, but not substantially. Uh, but but I, I I'm I'm not there. I mean, I know, I know he wants it. Yeah, he wants every new toy. So do I. But I just got it. Got it. Got to make a compelling offering that it makes sense. So I don't know. Once again, it really depends on the third-party apps. We don't know what it has yet, and that's that's what really yeah, that, makes or breaks this device. Yeah, just, I, that, that's what that's what breaks it for me out of the gate. For me, I, I just don't know what to do with it, and I, I don't know what where's it heading. Listen, I, I get it. Apple, Apple for the past decade, you know, been doing great things, and this unit. Again, not to, to you know regurgitate Justin's points again. This unit took its Apple's multiple year, over a decade of collection of technology summed up together to build this spatial computing. If you start really looking at the mechanical, technical function aspects of this Vision Pro unit, you're gonna see the face ID, you're gonna see the hand gesture, camera recognition, you're gonna see the eye tracking, which is new in some ways. You're gonna see the high resolution of the, the display, you know, and all that good stuff. The material, the aluminum, that you know, all that's in there. And then ultimately, the their their the, um the the, the neuro neurology logic chip is it R whatever the R one one chip, and then the M two chip, you know, um, the size of the logic board, all that good stuff. It, it, it just makes sense. It really does. So I can I can appreciate why they have that price tag, um, but I'm, I'm not confident for us. I don't think it is for us. So, but but hey, um, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Um, please start looking forward to Justin's channel. He's going to have additional comments without my Mickey Mouse commentary to go along with it. Um, you know, he's very down to earth. He's, he's looking. You know, we're all we're all just trying to enjoy it. Um, that's my last word. Anything from you, sir? Well, I think we got everything out. All right, till then, um, please just stay well and, and keep watching. Um, all right, take care. Peace.